Hi, my name is Qingwen and I'm from The Great British Mag, which is a digital magazine and podcast which covers everything an international student needs to know about studying and living in the UK. So I am an international student from Malaysia and I've been in the UK for about four years now. I did my undergraduate degree in Manchester and now I'm at the University of Bristol doing a master's in finance and investment. So today, I'll be giving you an honest review of what it's really like to be studying at the University of Bristol. So first things first, where is Bristol? Bristol is a city located in the southwest of England with neighboring cities like Bath and Cardiff and it is also just a two hour train ride away from London. Have you ever heard of Banksy? I'm pretty sure if I show you these pictures, then you might get a hint of who this mysterious artist is. Here in Bristol, you can see street art everywhere. And Banksy's art is one of the more popular ones that you can see dotted around in the city. So during Freshers Week, I actually went on a street art tour and I experienced Bristol's thriving art scene. And it's just like as if you're walking through an art gallery. Another thing Bristol is known for is its Hot Air Balloon Festival, which happens every year in August in the summer. So although I've never been to the festival, I've seen um, hot air balloons floating around in the sky in Bristol and it's just an absolutely amazing view because I've actually never seen a hot air balloon in the air before. <laughs> Moving on, why did I choose to study at the University of Bristol? First of all, I am an avid traveler and in my three years in the UK before I came to Bristol, I've actually visited the city in 2019 and I actually quite liked the city vibes uh, when I visited as a tourist and believe it or not I was actually greeted by a thick cloud of fog when I just got out of the train station but anyway there was so much to see in the city and I, yeah I really liked the city vibes so when I was applying for a postgraduate degree and so Bristol was just on the list of my considerations Secondly, the University of Bristol is also one of the top-ranked universities in the UK. It is also part of the Russell Group University, so I naturally gravitated towards that. So the question that everyone is waiting for, what is the University of Bristol really like and does it live up to the hype? Well, I can say one thing, that is, I wish I knew more about Bristol before coming here. What do I mean by that? Let's find out. People say that Bristol is really walkable, which is true for the most part, like you can get from A to Z in, in like under half an hour uh, just by walking. And I do quite a bit of walking here as well myself. What I didn't know before is that the campus is actually situated on top of a hill. And to get to classes, you have to climb up and down a, quite a steep slope, which is either from St. Michael's Hill or Park Street. Um, given that you live in the city center. Yeah, so if you're not really keen into exercising, that might get a bit tiring for you if you want to go up and down like the slopes every day just to get to your classes. But there are buses though that go up and down the campus um, from the city center. So if you're willing to spend a bit more, that should be fine. A single trip will cost you around £1.50. And it saves you quite a lot of time and energy. And when it rains, especially, your best choice is to take a bus. So the university has two main bus routes, which is the U1, which goes from the city centre to Stoke Bishop. And there's also the U2, which goes to the Langford campus, which is the veterinary campus. So um, I usually take the U1 and it takes about 20 minutes to get from the city centre to, uh, to the campus. And buying tickets is really easy as well. You just need to get the first bus app. Let me show you. Yeah, you just need to get the first bus app and you can get your ticket here. There'll usually be a code where you just go up the bus and validate the ticket. So it's really easy and you don't have to actually buy paper tickets, which might be more expensive. If you're not keen on waiting for the bus, you can also use the voice scooters. I've tried using it once, but it doesn't really accept my Malaysian license. It might accept international licenses, but I don't have one. So I've never tried the scooters, 
but you can see them just zipping around in the city center and it's pretty fun to see actually sometimes. One thing I noticed about Bristol is that it doesn't get as much rain as in Manchester where I lived for three years, which is in the northern part and Bristol is kind of down south a bit in the UK. That's just my observation, it's because I feel like I don't have to clean my muddy shoes all that much. But yeah, I feel that it's quite, uh, it's a bit warmer down here. Maybe some people can feel it, but I think, I personally think that it's just a bit warmer than up in the north. So facilities. At the university, we do have quite a lot of study spaces like the Arts and Social Sciences Library, you can go to Wills Memorial Library, Beacon House, Senate House, they all have study spaces and activity spaces that you can use. The Arts and Social Sciences Library is now open for 24 hours a day and 7 days a week. So you can go there any anytime that you feel like you want to study. It has three floors, there are silent study spaces, group study rooms that you can book whenever you want to um, discuss an assignment with your friends. I actually did my online exam there in the library because I thought the environment was quite conducive. Although I didn't have to come to campus for the exam, I just felt like I needed to use a the computer there. So just feel free to use uh, the resources you have in the library. Next is the Wills Memorial Building, our most iconic building and you'll most likely see it come up when you search up the University of Bristol. It sits on top of Park Street, which is a shopping street lined with shops and restaurants and it's really one of the most happening places in Bristol. There are cafeterias in many of the campus buildings, but personally I'll bring my food from home because I think that it's a bit expensive. There are vending machines that where you can get your drinks or just a snack and usually there, oh, there's also a, a coffee truck right outside on campus so you can get your morning coffee there or whenever you feel like it. There's also the Senate House where a lot of activities will be taking place. Other than study spaces that it offers, it also has the SU living room, activity spaces and also the global lounge. The Global Lounge is where international students get to hang out and mingle around and we also have like cultural events there. Um, recently we had the Diwali celebrations and the Lunar New Year celebrations. So it's a really inclusive space and I really like to go there because it just gives you the feel of what it's like to be on campus. You know, like everyone's there, like it's buzzing with activities. I just like the environment, you know. One thing about the campus that I find a bit weird is that the Students' Union building, the Richmond building, is actually quite far away from the main campus, like where everything is centered at. Because um, if you want to get to the SU, it's a 10 minute walk away from where everything is centered at. I don't usually go there because it's a bit far away, but usually we have student activities in there, there's even music rooms, dance theaters, radio stations and even an Olympic size swimming pool. And we have a lot of events there like gigs, um, parties. Yeah, it's quite a fun place to be as well. Just that it's a bit far. <laughs> Another question is, what is it like to be studying with the British students? To be honest, I am studying a business course and there aren't a lot of local students in my class. Most of the students are international students like from India and China, just not a lot of British students. So what I notice is that local students do voice out their opinions and ask questions more often in the lecture halls. So that kind of makes them stand out a bit more. Um, it's been the same case when I was doing my undergraduate degree in Manchester. So the proportion of international students for my course would be significantly higher than the local students. But I think that's the way it is um, for business courses. And to be very honest with you, I was just a bit disappointed when I found out that Bristol does not have a business school, considering that I had access to Manchester's business school when I did my degree. And I only realized that when I, I've already gotten the offer and I'm already here in Bristol, I walk up to the campus and I was like, where's the business school? Uh, yeah, I do have classes in 
the physics building. Yeah, you get what I mean. There's no like um, central facilities for the business school. So if you're coming here to study business, you might want to take that into consideration. Um, we don't have a business school, but we do have a faculty of social sciences and law. Moving on, what are the locals like? In my experience, the local people here are really friendly and they'll actually go out of their way just to make your day. For instance, during my time here in Bristol, I've lived with two local families and they are absolutely the nicest people I've ever met. They really cared about my well-being and they'll always ask how I am, if I'm okay. So a few days ago, I was on the bus. The bus driver actually came down and he personally asked one of the passengers if this was their stop. And I was thinking like, that's, that's really nice. And he actually didn't have to do that. But the driver actually came down to make sure that this is where they wanted to go. Yeah, he just went out of his way to just make sure that everyone's okay. And I find that really comforting at this, in a sense. Another time I was walking alone um, back home at night. One of the strangers that passed by me, he just said to me, have a lovely night and take care. And that was really a warm gesture. Well, while they are nice people, sometimes there are people who I can't really be sure of what their intentions are. My friends and I do experience some sort of racism from time to time. We just ignore it most of the time. We don't want to like get into a confrontation uh, for our own safety. This does not just happen in Bristol. It happens all over the place, all over the UK. But I really hope if you do come to the UK and study and in any city at all, you don't have to experience this kind of thing. So about university accommodation, the situation here is a bit challenging where spaces are limited and the rent is quite high. I met people who came to Bristol without securing a room, like they got the offer from the university, but they just couldn't manage to find a room because accommodation is just so limited. Some students don't have a choice. Um, they have to stay all the way in Bath, for example, and that's a different city altogether. So the only thing I can advise you is to secure a room as soon as you get your offer to, to make sure that there is still availability for you when you get here in Bristol. The rent prices here are actually above the national average. Um, a week's rent can cost you anywhere from £160 to £250. Um, that's for a private university hall in Bristol. Same goes for your shopping, your groceries. Um, I can make this comparison because I lived in Manchester for three years and then now I've, I've, I've come to Bristol. Yeah, Bristol is a bit higher in terms of prices. So to conclude, Bristol has a lovely mix of sceneries and city vibes. There's actually a lot going on. There's a lot to see, there's a lot to do, especially if you're into the art scene or even the skateboarding culture. The only downside is that it can get quite expensive, so set out a budget if you intend to study here. I hope this video has helped you out. Do subscribe to our channel for more useful stuff on studying in the UK and click on the notification bell to subscribe. See ya!